Hola, yo soy Carlos. Y yo, Miguel. Welcome to Puente Bridge. Stories that connect us. Hola, my name is Miguel Hernando Torres Umba. Bienvenidos. We recorded today's episode via the internet. And of course, this is a common practice nowadays. However, here at Puente Bridge, we had made our best efforts to always meet our guests in person, following all biosecurity indications, of course. We believe that talking to them face to face creates a unique experience that transcends the airwaves and brings them closer to you. But hey, this is the world we live in now, and we all had to adapt to lockdown restrictions. Luckily, we've got the technology at hand to make it easier. Recording via the internet brought new learnings and challenges, and it will sound slightly different, but rest assured that we have put all our dedication and love to make this interview as good as the others, and what's most important, we'll bring our guest closer to you. So, without further ado, let's meet Diego Najera, a young entrepreneur whose life experience reflects the beautiful connection between the British and Latino worlds that here in this podcast we want to celebrate. Now, imagine this. You're born in a country, and one year later, you get taken to another country with a different language, completely different culture. But as you grow up, both of the cultures that brought you to life are merged and you have to find ways to navigate through those and merge them into one. And then later you realize that you needed so more tools. So you decide to build those tools so that you can help other people. Well, that's the case of our guest of today. He is here to tell us about the British Latino Network and his journey in the UK. Hi, would you introduce yourself? Hi everyone. Hi, uh, Miguel. Thank you for bringing me on. My name is Diego. I'm uh, Diego Najera. I'm originally from Ecuador and I was born in Ecuador. I grew up here in the UK. I came here when I was very young and yeah, it's, um, it's been quite a journey. And most recently, most, one of my sort of most recent works is that I've set up the uh, British Latino network and it's been a, it's been great doing that. It's obviously the, the idea is to, to provide a space, a digital space for Latino professionals in the UK and students and all people really to, to connect and be able to, to form uh, professional relationships and hopefully uh, improve their career prospects in the future. Right. So the British Latino Network is focused on career development for young people. Would you tell us a little bit more about that? It's focused on career development. Really, the, the main outcome or the main goal that we have is to See that the lives of people, be whatever age you are, that talent isn't wasted and that those opportunities aren't wasted. So as a community, um, you know, we have a lot of passion. We have a lot of willingness to go out. You know, sometimes we can lack knowledge of how to go about to do certain things. So the idea is to at least provide you with the tools, with the resources, with the opportunity for you to go out and do what you want, what, what you want to do with your, with your career, with your life. So really my goal, my vision is, and the vision of the British Latino Network is to at least provide you with the opportunity and the resources to go out and do something. And so that talent isn't wasted. Thank you, Diego. I think it would be really great to understand a little bit your personal journey as well, starting from your upbringing and where you're yeah. from, a little bit more about your family. Then it would be interesting also to find out more about how and what brought you to create this network? Yeah, sure. So I was born in, in, in a city called Santo Domingo, um, which is a coastal city of Ecuador. Both of my parents are from Ecuador. My dad lived at one point in the US for a very brief time. And um, after that, we, we well, I moved here when I was like nine months. And from then on, it was, I pretty much grew up here. I have a younger sister. I'm also married, so I've also got to uh, have a wife as well. Uh, yeah, and basically all of my family are, are from Ecuador, and I basically grew up here in the UK. So you grew up here, you studied here, you went to school here? Yeah, yeah. How was your experience being a Latino person in a school? Honestly, I mean, I can say it was, it was pretty good. I mean, sometimes you could have maybe the odd issue, perhaps because you were Latino, but honestly, when I was younger, it wasn't really something that, that affected me much. I just enjoyed, I, like, until today, I just enjoy talking to people from different backgrounds. 
whoever it is you are. And I enjoyed that from when I was younger, you know, just being able to get involved in stuff. And that was pretty much the case. So school was good. Secondary school was fun as well. Uh, college was fun, but there was a bit more stumbling blocks that were there. And there were some challenges with me actually uh, trying to do well and, and pass the course so I could go into university. Going to university was was a blessing, was something which was great for me, and I enjoyed it a lot. It's been a, a good experience, I can say. And in this journey, were you very much engraved within the Latin community or were you distant from them? I basically grew up in Elephant and Castle and Camberwell um, from when I was very young. So my dad used to have a business in, in Camberwell and then in Elephant, uh, which was a Latin American business. And it was in like in a shopping center, one of these sort of shopping centers that I've set up uh, with, with different traders. So, so I grew up there. I grew up with a lot of people from the community until I was like maybe 11 and then my dad closed his business and from then on uh, obviously I didn't see as much Latinos as, as common as before but in school still so I'd say from a very young age I even went to Spanish school as well so my parents in there in a purpose to make sure that I learned Spanish to make sure that the language isn't forgotten they enrolled me in, in the school which was for, to learn Spanish and it was somewhere in Clapham and Yeah, there was a lot of students to Colombia and little children who were trying to learn Spanish. And uh, yeah, so from a young age, it was very, always very engraved in, in me and in my life. And how about the other way around with the non-Latin community, with the more local, more British community? That one's a bit of a, it's a bit of a, a weird one because the only sort of contact I had with the sort of British community or English community was mainly at school, really. That was pretty much it. So... I had friends, obviously, who weren't Latino, and that sort of that was my, I guess, my opportunity to get an insight um, into the British life outside of school, and so that was very that was useful, that was good. Um, but now that I sort of I'm working now, it's it's more sort of common for me now to speak to more people who are British and to sort of be more involved in the community. But if I'm honest, I think. It was probably more of a 70 to 30 percent uh, sort of uh, distribution between more being ingrained in the Latin American community than the English one or the British one uh, when I was growing up. And that slowly started to sort of balance out now that I'm, I'm grown up. Have you noticed that that has affected your integration into the wider community and into working opportunities? The fact that it was 70 30, did that impact you? I think slightly maybe slightly i mean what what does happen is that you know if you've grown up from a very young age speaking to only latinos going to spanish school going to um staying with just latino friends when you get picked out of that sort of comfort zone and you now have to all of your work colleagues aren't latino now they you know they're more mixed main perhaps the majority are english you do see well at least i felt At times, I did feel that I was out of my comfort zone. And it wasn't because of anything they were saying and stuff like that. It was just something personal. So I wasn't experienced and I hadn't had that exposure when I was younger. I would find myself feeling a bit awkward in some situations. Um, but as time has gone by and as I've, I've been more time at university and at school and at, and at work, sorry, that sort of started to change more. In Spanish and with the Latin American community, I'm very bubbly, very funny and very sort of joyful. However, when I was more in sort of where it was more predominantly English or British, I was more reserved and more sort of, I don't know, maybe more serious. And it wasn't the case of me doing it on purpose. I guess it was just something that, that was sort of happening, really. But yeah, it sort of started to balance out now and sort of my way of being is starting to sort of come out in, in all sort of aspects. How old are you now? So I'm 26 now. It's taken you 26 years to start finding that balance. Yeah, yeah. I feel like now I feel much more confident of sort of being in both settings. So. And do you think the language has had something to do? When you speak Spanish, it's a different way of approaching life than when you speak English. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I mean, the language has, a, has an effect, you know, on, on your behavior, on your way of seeing things. So I, I do feel that language, when I was growing up, uh, the conversations that I was having were very Latin American centric and everything was very much about the Latin American community. So for me, I feel that as time has gone by, perhaps my time speaking English has maybe taken up more time. 
And so now it's sort of becoming a bit more of the norm. But yeah, language definitely has, has, an, has an impact. And I felt now that with time, I've started to feel much more confident in, in both languages. Thank you. And I'm now curious about your university. So would you tell us what you studied? You know, you said that as you went into university, your world started to expand. So would you tell us what you studied? So I did an undergraduate degree in biological sciences um, at the Royal Veterinary College. And basically it was all a degree uh, looking into diseases um, at a molecular level, uh, cellular level, uh, sort of from a more um, anatomy perspective as well. I then went on to do a master's in health policy at Imperial College London. And that was pretty good as well. So that was very good. It gave me more of an insight into economics, into politics, into policy making in the UK and around the world. And yeah, it just gave me a really good insight into the world and how it how it functions in terms of the health system. So I've had a mix of very scientific and my second degree was more of on the sort of aspect of being more economical and more political. Right. And so where are you working at the moment? So currently I work in London and I work as an R&D consultant um, in the city of London uh, with a boutique firm. And basically they, well, we consult companies from all fields in science and technology and manufacturing. And we assist them with their applications to access something which is called an R&D tax benefit. So that's what I do at the moment. Um, but at the moment, I'm sort of uh, moving into pursuing further study. So I've done my undergraduate, I've done my master's, but now I'm looking to next year start a course in medicine and hopefully become a, a doctor in years to come. A lot of dreams there, a big ambition you got. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you always have that ambition since you were growing up? So I've always been ambitious, but the ambition to be a doctor is is, is a new one, really. Uh, probably three or four years Um I've always been very ambitious uh, in sort of a healthy way, you know, in, a, in wanting to do something and wanting to be productive with my life. So I've always been like that. What I lacked before was the discipline to do, to attain the goals. You know, one thing is dreaming. One thing is wanting to do all of these things. And it's a totally different thing to and I actually go out and do it. So nowadays I'm much more disciplined, much more focused. And yeah, basically give 100% to, to my goals and trying to achieve what I want to achieve. I want to ask you about the jobs that you've done. Uh, what kind of jobs have you done up until this point? I, so I've worked in cleaning since I was very young. So um, when I was like 11, I used to uh, accompany my parents every day after school. I would stay maybe up until 11 o'clock. I would get home like maybe at 11.30. And I did that until, yeah, pretty much I was through secondary school. Um, in college, I started to work as well. And then when I went into university, I worked as a cleaner in a primary school uh, throughout my undergraduate degree. So I'd finish uni and then straight after uni, I'd go straight into to work. What kind of hours was that? So that was in the evening. So I used to work from 6.30 to 8.30 and sometimes it would go a bit later than that. Or sometimes a, a, a job would come up, which is like a replacement and then I'd go and do it. And then when I graduated, uh, you know, despite graduating from one of like the top unis in, in sciences. Obviously, when you graduate, you have a lot of ambitions and you know, you're happy, you're joyful, looking forward to the future. However, when I graduated, despite doing pretty well, um, my first job was actually um, giving out leaflets. So uh, basically knocking on people's doors and giving out leaflets. And that was my first job. And that was a bit I found it a bit tough in the beginning just because I didn't expect to do that job when I start when I graduated. I did that and then eventually I became an admin assistant, then a business analyst, and then the job that I'm doing now is an R&D consultant. So it's been a gradual sort of process for me. And only recently really can I say that I'm doing a job that I, that I enjoy. Is this common, you think, within the Latin community and second generations to kind of stay stuck a bit within the cleaning job so yeah yeah it can happen and then the thing is there's sort of some some factors and one of the factors is the lack of work experience you know when you're younger having those access to an internship or to work experience is very important when you then graduate so employers will be this is an entry level job but do you have experience and of course you don't have experience the only experience i had was growing up was just cleaning so you can't really use that because they don't really value that 
So I, I've noticed and from the people I've spoken to, it seems to be a recurring issue. And I guess, unfortunately, the biggest issue, even though that's an issue, the biggest issue is accepting that as a reality and accepting that as the end and saying, all right, then this is this is it. And then sort of stopping. And I've seen people who have gone down that road. And what I would do is I would strongly encourage people not to go down that road because years will pass. You know, as years pass, your energy just diminishes. But that ambition you had will probably still be there. And it's just sad because as, as the years go by, you can become more um, discouraged and more sort of depressed with how things have worked out. So now that you're young, now that you have the opportunity, you need to go full, full steam ahead and carry on. Apply for as many jobs as you can. I applied for maybe 100 jobs, right? And I didn't get any of those jobs <laughs> until after I found this job on the one I'm doing now on LinkedIn. And it just goes to show, you know, sometimes things don't work out. But the, the fact that it doesn't work out doesn't mean you have to stop. It just means you have to carry on, you know? And it's brilliant. And so... That's what the British Latino Network is also looking to do. Yeah, of course. I mean, you know, from, from my own personal experience, I've learned how difficult it can be to to establish yourself, to be able to to find an opportunity. And the idea behind the British Latino Network is to, in our own small way at least, to try to contribute to to your future and be able to provide educational resources uh, through our mentoring program to be able to inspire the community through the people we speak to on our podcast or people we speak to uh, and we post on our social media, to be able to allow you to have the opportunity to speak to other Latino professionals through our platform as well. So really the idea is to create like a hub and hopefully this way stimulate entrepreneurship in the community, stimulate career progression, person, uh, uh, personal development, but we know that there's a gap there and we know that, that that's something that is needed. So we're trying to facilitate it. That's our goal. And hopefully, you know, my own goal is to ensure that people who have a talent don't waste their talent. A lot of people have are very talented, but sometimes you can lack discipline, which is something that I lacked and that's fine. But you need someone there to help you get past that. And once all of those things come into tune and they align, from then on, you can really make significant improvements in, in your life. Uh, in myself, in, in, in a matter of eight years, from failing A level, my A levels twice, um, you know, from where I've gone now, it's been a, a quite impressive and sort of marked difference. The ambition was always there. I was always ambitious, but I didn't have the discipline. And I didn't have the work ethic. I didn't have the maturity to do things that I, even if I don't want to do, I need to do it like I love it. And I need to carry on doing it. That's brilliant. You're also a, a fellow podcaster. So the British Latino Network also has a podcast. How long has that podcast been running for? About a year now. Nice. Um, initially, it started as a blog. So we'd interview people. And then I'd just listen back to the audio and I'd type it up and then I'd post it. And to a moment, I was like, why am I doing this? Why am I making this so <laughs> inefficient? I've got the audio. I can literally just put the audio out. And initially, it was maybe a bit of hesitation of how I could come across or whatever. But then I just said, let me just do it. You know, no one's an expert. No one starts being an expert. And you just start and you do it. And it's been going on for quite some time now. So I guess in terms of the audio format, it's probably been nine months now. It's very exciting because obviously we, we came across the British Latino Network when we started Puente Bridge Podcast. And we were watched like, wow, that's great. There's another uh, podcast that is like doing a similar work that we want to do. Um, and so we thought it would be great to have you here also to tell us about that experience, but also it's been great hearing your personal journey as well as an individual in this country and someone who is different from who we are. We both with Carlos, we both come, um, we arrived here. I arrived here about 13 years ago. He got here one year ago. So we, we were already grown up when we came to the country, whereas you're a second generation. So your insight is very, very interesting and very different. And talking about that, I want to, Talk about a little bit about identity when it comes to how do you identify yourself or how you see yourself? Is it a Latino? Is it a Brit? Is it a Brit Latino? Is it what is, how do you define yourself? I will say how I feel at times, it, it varies, you know, it's, and like I said, it's a, it's like on a spectrum. So think of a spectrum where on one end you've got British and on the other end you've got Latino. Sometimes it varies. Sometimes I feel very Latino. Sometimes I feel 
quite British. If I'm being honest, the way I look at myself and something that I've looked to do is to sort of not try and um, look at myself from a perspective, I'm Latino, or I'm British Latino, or I'm British. Why? Because the reason why I don't really do that much is because I know what I am. I am obviously Latino. I'm obviously a mix of being here and of Latin America. And so these things sort of flow through my personality, through the things that matter to me, through the things that I talk about. So what I really look at myself more is, at least on an individual level, I look at myself more as an individual rather than I'm a Latino from Ecuador living here, which is the case, of course, <laughs> that is true. But the way I, I sort of perceive myself is, is I try to perceive myself as more as, as an individual. And at least for me, it's been sometimes more healthy because sometimes, you know, if you go into a job interview or you go to a massive networking event, sometimes you can feel, have maybe a, a complex or sort of a feeling of, oh, I'm the Latino, I'm the British Latino, I'm not from Latin America, I'm not from here. And sometimes that can uh, sort of throw you off and you can feel maybe a bit uh, nervous or a bit uncomfortable. So what I've learned really is to sort of look at myself and say, this is who I am. I'm me, my person, and this is me as an individual. And so that has sort of allowed me to sort of relieve myself of perhaps some stereotypes that people may have of Latino. It has allowed me to relieve myself of any sort of expectation I may have, which may be unconscious, right? And that I may be trying to, to live up to unconsciously, which can happen sometimes. Um, so what I try to do is really be more conscious of me as an individual. And naturally, the things of me being a Latin American are going to come out. That's excellent. So we're just going to have a very short break. When to bridge. Stories that connect us. Are you looking for something else to listen after this? Check out our first episodes of Puente Bridge podcast. So far, we've had Lucila Granada, an Argentinian activist who talks to us about the official recognition of the Latin American community in the UK. Vanessa Guevara, a dancer from Mexico whose life challenges and dedication have taken her to become an elite performer. And the creative producer Malu Ansaldo from Argentina who literally changed the history of theatrical world tours. We can guarantee you will love them. Only here in Puente Bridge Podcast, stories that connect us. The British Latino Network is a London-based company which seeks to incentivize professional networking, career progression, and business entrepreneurship among the community of Latin American professionals. British Latino Network provides you with the opportunity to connect with other like-minded individuals find business partners and take that step in advancing your career progression. For an online networking platform, workshops, webinars and industry connections, check out the British Latino Network. Went to Bridge. Stories that connect us. And so let's carry on a little bit more about identity and then a couple of questions. I'm going to give you two options and I want you to tell me what you prefer. Yeah. So do you prefer tea or coffee? Coffee. <laughs> How come? I find it nicer to be honest. Uh, tastes better, yeah. and yeah, it's just something which is quite common. So, so how about arepas or sourdough bread? No, oh, arepas, one hundred percent. Yeah, <laughs> sourdough bread. I'm not, I'm not much of a fan to be honest. Yeah. yeah. Um, is there something I want you to tell me something that you love about Ecuador? So something that I love about Ecuador is uh, the sense of community and the people, and so. The people, and from the people, let's say it flows the sense of community and flows that sort of passion and that, that sort of love that you get from people there. Um, and it's very inspirational. So I'd say the people is something which is very, that I love a lot about Ecuador. And how about London and the UK? What do you love of here? So something that I love is the opportunity. So the opportunities that are available are very, uh, very unique, you know, that there's a lot of there's a lot to be improved in the UK and in London, and a lot more can be done a hundred percent. However, there are opportunities, and that's something that we, you know you can't deny uh, from the country you live in. So I came from Ecuador. A lot of I know a lot of people who are family members, people from back in back home. You know they work very hard. They are very intelligent. Study a lot. 
but they still don't have the opportunity. And you know, and here with the, with with some work, you can get something. You can have an opportunity, and that's something that can't really be uh, underappreciated. That's something that we need to learn to value. Of course, there can be things that can be improved, but the the opportunity that are the opportunities that are available are very valuable, and they can change lives and and they can inspire and they can change not only your lives but your 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 children, your generation. So. That's something that I very much value and I'd say love of the, the UK and London. Thank you. And um, what do you think the Latin American community brings bring to the UK? It's something that the UK doesn't really, isn't really expecting or something that they've not seen before. And the reason I say this is because the UK, they have quite a, a you know, well-documented history with the Asian community, the African community, Uh, with the American community, uh, let's say the US, right? However, with the Latin American community, we're quite new to them. And despite them being able to see us on the news and seeing these highlight news of what the con of the what the region may may be like, we're quite unique as as a community. We're very united um, across the region, but we're very different as well. Very different, despite speaking the same language. You go from Ecuador to Colombia. One word is completely different in, in, in Colombia. The food is different. The music can be different. So there's a lot of variety. And I think that's something that we bring is we're very determined, right? And by being determined, that means that we're going to be people who contribute to this community. We're going to be people who make a difference and we, we make differences despite the, you know, our, our, how new we are in the community in the UK. You know, we try and find a way to do something, to find a job, to help the community, to make sure that we're contributing something. So I think that's something that the UK isn't really expecting. And we're sort of seen as perhaps, um, maybe an anomaly when they see someone who's a, who's a Latino. They're like, oh, he's, where are you from? Uh, but I think with time, it's going to be more of a, it's going to be more common. And once it becomes more common, I think our representation and our impact is going to be seen much more. That's how we are. That's how, as people, that's how we are. We're very passionate about causes. We're very passionate about contributing. So I think that's something that, that they're not, that the community, the UK really isn't ready. And it, that's something that we're going to bring. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. Thank you. Um, it's been, yeah, it's really great, obviously, listening to you and listening to your story and your journey and It's wonderful to see the different networks happening and exactly what you're saying, the, um, the visibility is starting to occur mm -hmm. as we, as we keep progressing and developing and, and new generations also come with new ideas. So that's really wonderful. And, you know, thank you very much for your work. You've been doing an amazing process with the British Latino network, but also thank with you. yourself to inspire others and you inspire your families. And that's, that's very commendable. And thank you for that. Um, before we start uh, closing, I want to ask about your family a little bit yeah. and I want you to tell me a little bit about your, your parents and when we spoke earlier you told us about something they're doing now which I think find I find it extremely inspiring and I want you to tell uh, yeah. our audience what your parents are doing now and where they come from yeah sure yeah well my parents came to the UK 20 years ago 20 plus 24 years ago um well, well 25 because I'm 26 now 25 years ago so it's been long time uh for the majority maybe for 20 21 years of that they spent cleaning working and cleaning working in in manual labor pretty much you know working in jobs which are very tiring but which were very variable you know they weren't the best way of income and because of the hours you know we they couldn't spend as much time as they would have liked with us when we were younger as time went by obviously me and my sister we became more independent and they started to at least feel a bit more relaxed with, with their hours. And they were able to now start to, to invest in themselves, which was something they hadn't really done for the last 20 plus years. And so what eventually happened was that um, my mom and my dad independently would start studying English and maths. Uh, however, my dad sort of went first and he did, he completed English and maths to, in English um, to a level two level. And from then on, um, I think he also did a level three course, if I'm not mistaken, in maths, which was pretty good. That is really good considering that he hadn't even done that in Ecuador himself, not even in his own language, and then to do it here. And so what ended up happening was that he went to university here in the UK. So he enrolled at the University of Roehampton, 
He did a course in theology, as in my mum, and he completed this course. He's always been very interested in theology and, the th and philosophy and sociology, all of those sort of types of humanities. And from then on, he did that, and now he's in his final year of a master's degree. And so that is something which is very, very unique and something which is very inspiring for me, you know, because uh, he had that opportunity and he saw the opportunity. He knew perhaps his English wasn't perfect, but he knew there was a shot and you need to take that shot. You know, if you wait until your English is perfect, if you wait until you've got everything down to the T and you know everything, it's not going to happen. You know, mm -hmm. you need to capitalize on opportunities when they come up. And that's what he did. And then my mother also completed her undergraduate degree. And so with that, uh, they've managed to, my dad carries on um, doing, what well, he's doing his MSc, he's doing his master's, and they've also set up a sort of like an institute where they teach uh, theology, and they've been doing that for nearly a year and a half now. Wow. Um, so my dad does it as, a, as an instructor, as an, from an academic perspective, um, but he also does it as a, as a pastor as well and as a counsellor. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't an easy journey for them, but thankfully they managed to to make somewhat of a, of a change for themselves and, and they seem very happy and that's all you can really ask for as a son. That's amazing. Can you tell us their names, please? Yeah, so my mom is called Maria Elena and my dad is called Fernando, which is why I was named Diego Fernando. Well, congratulations to Maria Elena and Don Fernando for their amazing work and also the family they've got and the inspiration they bring to, to their community. Well done them. And I relate as well. Um, my mom in Colombia is also studying. She's studying law mm -hmm. and she's 51. So she yeah. also studied late and then she's going through it. It's very dedicated and it's very inspiring and encouraging to see her. So yeah. I, I can feel how proud you must be about them. Yeah, yeah, no, it's something, it's something great. It really is, uh, you know, to be able to see them invest in themselves now. It's, it's, it's important, you know, and which is why we as, as children or as the next generation, You know, we can't afford to make that be in vain. So we need to, you know, that time they invested in us, we need to make sure they, their investment gives some return. Um, so, so yeah, we need to do our best and, and honor them for, for the things that we do. Excellent. Thank you so much, Diego. Thank you very much for coming and joining us in Puente Bridge. And, you, and we're looking forward to listening to more of your Bridges Latino Network podcast and more of what you come up with in the future. Gracias, yeah. Diego. Thank you, Miguel. Thank you. It's been a pleasure and thank you everyone for listening. And that was Diego Najera, a person just like you and me. We found Diego's story of determination and humility particularly enlightening. If you want to learn more about the work of the British Latino Network that Diego leads, head over to the BritishLatinoNetwork.org.uk. And also have a listen to their podcast. It's called British Latino Network. You can find it here in the same platform you're using to listen to this podcast. This was our interview of today. I hope you enjoyed it as much as we enjoyed making it. If you like what you hear, help us by sharing this episode with your friends. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter. Let us know your thoughts, ideas and recommendations and remember... This interview is also available in Spanish, presented by my colleague, Carlos Osa Valencia. We want to thank Lyrics Organics and Active Citizen by the British Council for their encouragement to make this podcast. Puente Bridge is produced by Umba Film and Media, created by Carlos Osa Valencia and Miguel Hernando Torres Umba. Sammy Fiorino is our associate producer, Nelson Cruz, our community manager, The graphic design is by Fabian de Asa and the music is licensed by Artlist. My name is Miguel Hernando Torres Umba and I'll catch you on the next episode of Puente Bridge Podcast. Stay tuned.